The other thing that we recommended as part of addressing the shortfall that we're facing is that we not just look at this year's prices in isolation or even look at next year's prices in isolation, that we actually start looking forward in the next three years and start being much more effective in our planning. There should be an end game here. While we're currently facing a, a very difficult time, a crisis also provides an opportunity for us to ask fundamental questions about how we operate, what our priorities are, and what kinds of things, what kind of city we want to be in the future. Um, and so what we laid out was our ideas of how to lay out a three-year plan for the future. It starts with basic fiscal responsibility. And it's no different than your own personal household. If, you, if, if a spouse loses her job or, um, or suddenly you have to plan for your child's higher education in the next few years. We're recommending that we engage in basic um, fiscal policies that if followed and adhered to will mitigate the, and, and reduce the chances that we'll be in the situation in the next several years. It begins by a commitment to a reserve that's at least 5% of our general fund. And in our case now, it's, a, it's slightly over $200 million. And that that reserve be protected and always maintained. And if ever we're in a situation like we are this year where we have to dip into it, that there's an immediate plan to replenish it. That reserve is a critical part of governing. It's a critical part of any household. You always have a savings account for the, for the leaky roof for the plumbing being shot. And, and city government should be no different. We should commit and maintain a pay-as-you-go policy. Part of the reason we're in this situation is that we've, we've been spending beyond our capacity, not just one year or two years, but many years. That predates mayors and city council members. And it's easy to do that because during the good years as we experienced in the last decade, the city had more revenue than it had anticipated. So we had a surplus every year. And so there was a, there was a discussion and an investment made to our community and to the services that our community insists on. Many of you may have been part of that discussion asking uh, where you were asked, how should we invest our new dollars to city government? What kind of services do you want to see? And so we engage in a variety of initiatives that brought services closer to the people, that enhanced public safety, that increased our library hours, all the things that we all care about and want to see happen. The downside of that is that that revenue wasn't cut staying forever. And like any other time in our history, we have good years and we have bad years. And we were assuming that those good years were going to continue, or that at least we weren't anticipating the kind of dramatic impact the recession would have. No one could. And so what we're suggesting that at, on a, on, on a go-forward basis, that we treat revenue that's new, that's maybe one time or coming a couple years, and treat it as such, and we use it to reinvest in ourselves, but on one-time efforts. To reinvest in our capital, um, in, 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 in our infrastructure. To reinvest in areas where we in deferred maintenance, in areas where we perhaps have ignored because of the difficulties of the, of, uh, the of previous recession. And that we be very careful about how we expand government and we'd be much more strategic in the future about the expansion of government so that when the down times occur, we're not in the same situation that we're currently in. We also recommend that we establish a fund for our pension systems, as our pensions are, 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 are subject to the ups and downs of the economy. We recommended that we put away our MICLA credit card, and you know we use our, our sort of our commercial, commercial paper program as a way of investing in our infrastructure. But sometimes we've gone beyond what are absolutely critical things and purchase things that fall into the nice to have category. So this year we recommended that we put that credit card away and put it in the freezer <coughs> and do it at home. And, that, and I'm, I'm glad to report that both the mayor and the council supported that initiative. And then we also
also recommended that we engage in long-term planning and engage in three-year budgets as part of our ongoing uh, process. Beyond that, we wanted, we also recommended that we engage in a healthy discussion about what our core mission is as a city. You know, we're simply not in a situation where we could do everything for everyone anymore. And there are certain things that we cannot afford to do. And it's not to say that those things are not important, but it's, it's an issue pertaining to what we do well and what are things that we perhaps partner with somebody else to do. So we recommended a, a, a series of reductions and different ways of engaging in some of the work. And that's listed in, in uh, I think, page 14 of the booklet. The other, the other idea that we established is that we start looking at public-private partnerships. That we figure out that there are certain things that we should be in the business of doing, and there are other things that we want to support, but perhaps engage in a partnership with someone else. What is, it, what is there inherent about a zoo that requires it to be run by the city? Most cities have figured out that the zoo is an important part of the community, but it's not absolutely critical that they run them. And part of the example that I use on the case of the zoo is, is the experience that I had with the county with the various arts venues. People forget that Disney Hall, uh, LACMA, the Hollywood Bowl, the Natural History Museum, and a variety of other cultural venues are actually county assets. And they're, and they're part of the county family. And the reason why we forget that is because they're run by private foundations that partner with the county to maintain the kind of programming that we all uh, enjoy. What that allows us, the county to do is to basically partner with the private entity to use both private money and public sector money to create a complete program. In the case of Disney Hall, the county is responsible for the maintenance and the sort of the the lights and the water and the cleanliness of Disney Hall, while the, the foundation is responsible for the program. So it does two things. It maximizes the partnership with the philanthropic community or with, or, or with the business community to engage in a cultural venue. And it also allows the program part of the work to be administered by people who actually do that all day and do it for a living. When was the last time you heard the Board of Supervisors argue about the kind of artwork that should be at LACMA, or the kind of symphonies that should be played at Disney Hall? They never have, because they're not in charge of that. And it's not their, their core competency. Their job is to make, keep the lights on and to make sure that it's operating uh, effectively. So we're, I'm proposing that we engage in a series of evaluations of everything from the zoo to the convention center to golf courses, uh, to El Pueblo, not to do a wholesale of city assets. Let me clarify, our goal is not to sell any single asset that we currently have as a city, but rather to have partner with individuals whose sole purpose is to do that work. And so that we focus on what we do well, and we partner with somebody to increase the, the, the capacity of that particular asset. 